No. Hello, Photopillars, Rafael, the bar here. Welcome to, to another masterclass. Today, we're going to learn how to focus stack our landscape images with Isabella Tabaki. Isabella, welcome to the show. Hello, hello, Rafael. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here to explain you how to use focus taking, which in nice. which uh, situations you have to use this amazing technique. Yeah, because I mean, I've been I've been looking at your photos, and I'm a huge fan of your work. I mean, your images. All you have to do is to go to your Instagram and, and watch your work, and it's, uh, it's amazing how you create all these dark sharp images from front to back. Perfect, perfect. Yes, <laughs> yes. There are some very useful techniques, and uh, it depends also on the condition, on the situations, and uh, I'll show you also. Uh, several of my images to explain to you how did they take them, uh, in which situation there was, and also we will see a kind of a little bit more tricky technique. Uh, I will I will show you how to how to merge uh, all or the beginning because uh, sometimes it's very difficult that technique the hard focus taking. I will explain you about it later. Uh, we, we can't wait. Uh, everybody watching, uh, we have almost 300 people watching now as live, uh, uh, really ready to learn from you and from your art. But before, for the people that don't know who is uh, who Isabella Tabaki is, uh, tell us a bit about your, yourself and your story. Okay, uh, I'm Isabella Tabacchi. I'm a landscape photographer from Italy. I live in Bologna, but I, I like to travel and discover new landscapes around the world. Uh, or I started in uh, to take pictures in the Dolomites. Then uh, mm -hmm. since uh, that period, I wanted to, uh, ex to explore more and more the world. And uh, I take uh, pictures. Uh, and uh, through my landscapes, I tell people my emotions. I want to express my emotions through my landscapes. I love to play a lot with the elements of earth in the foreground, so I like to create some uh, sharp, some, um, some very particular foreground, some very <laughs> nice uh, um, uh, full of shapes, uh, foreground full, full of geometries, uh, because I like to express messages also with nature, and they like to uh, to to check some uh, some techniques uh, some ways to lead uh, to my to the to the subject of uh, of the image so people that look at my image can uh, can can have a, a direction to see to see even better the subject of my of my pictures wow wow well, well, really your images are amazing and we can wait to learn from you so isabella uh, I know that you're a professional landscape photographer that you do this for a living. You have even NFTs and you run workshops. You have uh, online tutorials to share your expertise with people. And we're so thankful to have you uh, with us today and yeah, we're ready for action. So anytime you want to start the presentation, let's go for it. Yes, 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 I, yes, exactly. I, I do photography for a living because uh, I said I want to live with my dreams. I want to live yeah. with my dreams and find a way to live with it. And that's why I, I found several ways to, to earn my to earn money, to make a living with photography. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to, to make more and more initiatives uh, every time. So yes, also NFT was uh, quite um, quite uh, an opportunity for me uh, to, to explore a new world also a new way a new art market mm -hmm. beside all the art market also uh, that i have on my online shop also and that's the goal right to have uh, make a living and have more time to create more amazing images yes it's not easy but uh, but i wanted to be determined to this and uh, I make it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, not uh, an easy thing to do. Thank you. Okay, Doki, do you want to, I mean, I suppose that people is looking for to see your images, okay. your work, okay. and, and, and learn so, the story behind the images. 
Perfect. So I can share my screen. Let me see if you see it, if you see bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yes. Let's start. So let's start from for uh, about each on each image i will tell you uh, what uh, uh, how did i do to take these images where they were taken and i have some images for you this is the first isabella, one isabella, isabella mm -hmm. please hide this bar that you see that you have on on, your, on the photo yeah no uh, the bar the bar uh, oh. uh, okay. uh, go back to the photo Come back, we'll go back to the photo. Okay. Back to the photo. And here you have like a, a, um, a blue. I, yeah, that's it. Oh, awesome. perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Now, now okay, we let's see the <laughs> yes, yes, perfect. Let's start from this image. Okay, this image is taken in Switzerland in a lake called the uh, Green de Jose. Is a very beautiful lake. And uh, here, um, I always try to find something, <laughs> as you see, some leading lines to something creative that can lead to the background that in, in this uh, occasion is the Matterhorn, one of the most beautiful mountains in the world. And uh, in this lake, uh, I, I wanted to visit this lake since a long time because uh, there, are, there is a very beautiful reflection of trees, in, um, especially in autumn. And, but I didn't want it just a reflection. So when I, I was there next to the shore of the lake, I went around and uh, I went a little bit up. There, uh, there, was, um, there was a kind of little hill and I went a little bit up and I found a kind of, uh, yes, yeah, some roots that were so much similar to a spider. So when I saw this condition, it's, uh, I just I just wanted to take a picture and uh, I made everything possible, for, um, everything possible to have uh, a very beautiful frame and uh, to have a very nice perspective, especially of uh, the roots because the roots uh, had to be in a very nice perspective to lead to this mountain. This image was taken in, uh, um, in at the end of 2019. And okay, so uh, here I used it focus taking and I took three images because focus taking is a technique that is used when you have different plans in your image that make it create the depth of field. Uh, you need it because uh, uh, some areas are in front of other areas and uh, they can't be focused together with the other areas even if uh, you use uh, hyperfocal or a very uh, a very close uh, um, if you use, for example, f16 as an aperture, so a very closed aperture, you need uh, absolutely to uh, to make also a focus taking, especially when I use since when I use middle format, medium format, because medium format is very three dimensional, the the format, the the sensor. So uh, I need always to use focus taking to have everything sharp because. Mm -hmm not all the plans are sharp because something if something is uh, on the on the front uh, um, on the front in comparison with the background for example here in this situation the roots uh, the stones uh, this part of the hill is on the front uh, in comparison with the background the lake and the mountain i have to make two exposure at least two exposure but sometimes even three four and uh, in this situation, I did three exposures mm -hmm. because uh, I need uh, to merge all these uh, all these areas with different uh, in a different uh, in a different uh, because the depth of field is very three dimensional. Uh, in fact, uh, I made one shot for the part of the roots that is closer to me than. Uh, the other part, this part here. Don't know if you see my mouse here. The my, yeah, yeah. my cursor, yes. Here mm -hmm. 
the stone that I call this, I call the middle, the middle, the middle area. And then another exposure for the lake and the mountain, because the lake and the, mount and the mountain are quite distant, even if uh, the trees are, um, are a little bit more uh, um, near to me, close to me than the mountain, they are anyway very far away, quite far away. So mm -hmm. they are on the same plan, while the stone here is on a different plan, a little bit um, less closer, but closer than the background and the very, the very, the closest part of the foreground is also another plan. So I made three shots here. How far away is the, the, are the roots from the camera? What's the distance between the camera and the roots in the foreground? Mm, I don't remember, but of course they, uh, they have to be, of course, the distance has to be more than 30 centimeters because there mm -hmm. is a, a minimum distance um, of course, so they yeah. they can be focused, uh, but mm -hmm. the distance in in the reality, the distance has nothing to do with the with the focus with the reason mm -hmm. why we do focus taking. It's not uh, because of the distance, but is because of uh, the different plan. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have uh, um, a foreground that uh, the camera, the sensor, the lens. Uh, perceives like uh, a foreground that perceives like in front of uh, in comparison with the background of course the foreground uh, the the camera can't uh, can know if uh, if should uh, put the focus on uh, on the foreground or the background of course uh, it depends on the focus point mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it can't uh, it's like just the double exposure it mm -hmm. can't perceive the difference when there is a night difference between shadows and highlights. It can perceive so much well how to if if mm -hmm. to make an exposure with everything with everywhere that in, information is the same. But mm -hmm. this doesn't have to do with the distance, but with the plans, mm -hmm. with the plan of the image. In fact, usually, in fact, uh, there is. Mm, the focus taking is needed when we are very low with our tripod or with our with our camera because the more you are low on the foreground close to the foreground the more the camera perceives the foreground as in front of in comparison with the background mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in fact uh, sometimes for example in kamchatka uh, i i took several or, or also in other situations I took several shots um, with a tripod that was quite high, more or less high, like me, or a little bit less. And uh, I didn't need to use focus taking because uh, the, the camera was not so close to the foreground. <laughs> of it's, course, it's, when, yeah. So you, you like to lower your, your, your camera down, right? To, to get this nice perspective. Exactly. or or you, you need to have also the the foreground that is a little bit higher uh, mm -hmm. for example if you have uh, very high plants or very high flowers that are very high very tall sorry very tall mm -hmm. flowers and very tall plants that are quite taller as much as the camera mm -hmm. then you need to use focus taking because uh, the camera perceive it like in front of in comparison with the background. Fantastic. A uh, uh, question about the, the focal length for this photo. What, what's uh, the focal length you use? This was this was an exception. Usually I use uh, XCD21 uh, mm -hmm. that with medium format is uh, 17 for a full frame. But this was with XCD30, which is around uh, 24 millimeters for a full mm -hmm. frame. So uh, it's like this because uh, I didn't want that the matter was too little, too small. In yeah. fact, with the XCD21 would have been 
small because the lake is not so close to the matter and the distortion as we know the distortion of uh, of the wide angle is quite high especially with the mountains so i decided to use a, a little bit longer focal length um, and yes with a little bit longer focal length it was even more needed the focus taking no, it's beautiful and the light is beautiful in the image Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, it's one of the best places I visited, and I didn't I didn't know ab about this. Some things you can't plan because uh, when you mm -hmm. visit a place, uh, sometimes you if you don't know the place, uh, you have to search to, to look for some uh, creative things <laughs> that can some things that can uh, make your foreground very creative. And uh, sometimes you have to look for them, but uh, it's my favorite part of my work is because I like to explore, to have some surprises. And this was a, one surprise for sure. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Perfect, perfect. So um, let's see the next image. Okay, for example, uh, this is a situation in which uh, in which uh, I didn't use focus taking. I want also to, see, to show you the differences because here, for example, I was not so close uh, to the foreground. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, here I have a lot of beautiful foreground in that way, but the the tripod, the camera was quite high, so here it didn't. They didn't use focus taking, even if uh, I use also here medium format that is very three-dimensional, and here I didn't use it. For instance, nice. here I use focus taking exactly. <laughs> here I use focus taking because, uh, as you see, there are two different plans, or more, more because uh, there is also a plan that is in front, more in front. Uh, here, for example, we have the frame made by all the trees. Mm -hmm. The tree is a, an acacia tree, this one that makes a kind of frame. In Namibia, the, these trees are very beautiful because they are so big and the branches can create some very beautiful, very beautiful geometries, very beautiful cures, very beautiful frames. And of course, uh, here we have the background. So I needed a shot for the background. Then we have a part of the background here that is closer a little bit. But we don't really need it because the, um, the camera was quite higher than, than the, um, than, yes, than the, the camera was quite taller uh, in comparison with the floor. But of course, mm -hmm. we have this part of the branches of the tree that is more in front than this other part of the trees. And then we have also the background. So I made one shot for the background. And then I, I made one shot for the, the further, the, uh, yes, the the parts of the trees that were less closer here mm -hmm. and then i made another another shot for this part of this tree that was closer to my camera but mm, mm, in a, so in another plan here was here in front of these parts and also this also this part also there is another because this part of the branches, the branches is a little bit further away, a little bit more behind this other part, which is mm -hmm. done here on the left. So I think I made four, four shots. Sometimes I don't remember because I did these images three, um, yes, like two and a half, <laughs> two and a half years ago. But yes can i can explain a little bit more how was the situation and yes. of course i made also double exposure because because of course i needed to have uh, all this part 
of the trees uh, a little bit more brighter because otherwise I didn't have details on my trees. Uh, so it's not uh, good. And uh, I needed also to add uh, uh, the sky or this part of the sky that was quite recovered, recovered information, especially on this part uh, in the center here of the frame behind the, the Weaver Birds tree. So it was tricky, but uh, but very beautiful also, very beautiful to do it, of course. And the result uh, is one of my favorites. Images. Mm -hmm. When you're focusing in uh, the different planes, how do you do it? You just take your, your camera and make focus on the different distances and you don't move tripod because you want to keep the same framing or you just uh, frame with your camera on the tripod? No, I I just uh, don't know. I, I put the camera and uh, check the composition, see mm -hmm. uh, which composition I want to have. And, and then I, I keep the camera on the tripod uh, still fixed. Mm -hmm. And then I make several exposures with different focus points. For example, I make an exposure with the focus point here. Then I, made an, mm -hmm. I make another shot okay. with a focus point here. here. Then okay. another one here, here. And then the exposure, the double exposure. So. <laughs> Fantastic, it's, fantastic. Sometimes, sometimes when uh, when I I'm not able, for example, to take the shot without uh, with the tripod because the situation is very tricky, I need also to take shots freehand, and then I need uh, mm -hmm. to to align the layer. And as we will see now later, uh, I will align the layer in Photoshop, and then merge everything. Try to merge everything, and uh, it's not easy especially when you have uh, several branches of the tree, leaves, uh, flowers that move from a shop to the other. It's not so easy, but, uh, but sometimes, uh, um, for example, I'm, it's not so easy to take shots with the tripod in some situations. Mm -hmm. And now to, to be more flexible, I bought uh, some, uh, yes, less, less spring. I bought a, a jobby a Joby Gorilla Pod, mm -hmm. uh, which is some people told me, oh, it's not stable, it's not stable. But uh, when I when I used it, it was quite useful because I it could take really the images quite next to the floor, and uh, it's much more easy to make focus taking also in some situations in which the tripod is too is too much, mm, it's mm -hmm. too much, it's too big. And uh, and also another another tip that I can give to you is to use the tripod upside down. Oh. So you are more cl closer to the floor, and you can you can have a, a very beautiful view, like the like the foreground is even a little bit more big, and you can be closer to the foreground. It's much easier when you need nice. to take shots very closer. But here I didn't use the tripod upside down because uh, the tree was quite was quite high, mm -hmm. was more or less mm, this, yeah, this part of the tree was more or less here. This a little bit, yes, less taller than me. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. We have a few questions, Isabella. Do you want to answer them now, or we want you prefer to oh, also wait now. a bit? Also yes. now, yes. Because it's uh, people is asking so many questions. By the way, I haven't mentioned <laughs> that, but we have Sandra Vallaure in the chat, so feel free to to ask questions that you're already uh, doing for Isabella. So I'll try to to uh, for example, here we have Ron Bink. I've tried it several times and noticed that the focus plane is always a strong curve one. So not a uh, nearly straight line across the photo. Uh, okay. I guess that's due to the lens de design and maybe some focus br uh, breathing. Uh, mm, it gets yes, hard. Um, mm. Mm. Any advice to, to avoid this problem, to get this curve? That is always curve. I, I don't understand. Uh, it means that 
the foreground, when it takes the foreground, is always like curve and you want yeah, more so. straight. Okay, uh, this depends from the distortion of the lens, of the wide mm -hmm. angle. Sometimes some wide angle have more distortion and some have less distortion. I personally like this effect, but I think that you should maybe fix it in Photoshop with some uh, maybe liquefy or distort uh, or some transformation in uh, edit transformation you in on photoshop menu you can uh, you can fix the distortion a lot so you can make it make them a little bit more straight as you wish this is not a problem yes nice, okay nice. okay Other questions yeah, I have a few more, but I need to find them. Du, du, du. Okay, let's continue and ask you the questions when I find them here in the chat. Okay, perfect. Yes, so let's continue. Okay, this this is another another example on how uh, there was a part that was closer so on another plan so uh, and then we have also the background uh, this is a kind of a kind of uh, it's not a cave it's like a very huge stone very huge stone in this lake and i wanted to have the cave effect so i placed myself a little bit more behind this kind of wall and uh, because I wanted to have the icicles here so I of course I took a shot for this part and then another shot for the background this was quite easy because we don't have elements that are moving here so this is quite easy to to, it can be staked with the masks or also with some uh, software uh, for uh, to stack the focus staking. So this is, for example, a very easy situation. And here is a, we have a situation in which we have a part that is closer, that is on a little bit um, in front, that is in front in comparison with the background. So we have uh, we have two plans and we have to make a focus um, to make an exposure with the focus point here and then exposure with the focus point on the mountain because of course <laughs> this case is difficult to to put on focus and uh, the mountain is considered at the same uh, in the same position infinite position um, with the sky beneath is in front of uh, it's considered infinitum, infinite, yeah. an infinite position, yes. Nice. Okay, oh. this is another image. And this was a little bit more tricky because uh, uh, these flowers uh, can a little bit move it <laughs> from one shot to the other. Besides, I think this one was taken, I didn't have uh, a good, um, I wasn't able with the tripod. It was a little bit tricky with the tripod. So I think, I don't remember so well, but I think I took it free end. And here I made a lot of, uh, a lot of shots. For example, this, there is this area in the front for these parts of the leaves. Then there, there is, mm, there are these flowers which are on the same plan. And then there are these other flowers that are on a different plan because they are a little bit more behind than these ones. Then there are these flowers. So there is this plan with also a part of the stone, which is also quite in the same position behind this part. And, uh, and then there is this part that is behind in comparison with those flowers and then there is the background <laughs> and uh, the most the most difficult part of course uh, was to 
create uh, the all the edge with the masks uh, was to paint here with the masks uh, to save the edge of uh, of those parts of those plants hmm. also because the plants were moving a little bit so i needed to to clone the plants which were behind because when you make the mask when you make the mask when you create a mask there are some parts which are the, the blurred parts the blurred exposure that appears behind the sharp one when you make the mask because uh, uh, if uh, the the plant moves from one shot to the other let's say that uh, the blurred plants were a little bit moved from here to here of course when you make the mask to make the to to make uh, to yes to create a, a, an edge behind a, a sharp part behind those flowers unfortunately it appears the blurred flower the blurred plant in this case behind mm -hmm. the other one so you need to clone to clone this blurred plants behind so you need before you have to make the mask and then clone the blurred part but we will see it better with the um, with the example image so this nice. one was quite tricky but very so, nice so four images right for four shots or um or one five. two three four five yes five, five. Mm -hmm. yes this was one of the most <laughs> the, the the most difficult images because of course here we have a lot of plans and uh, sometimes it's easy to get confused when uh, you make the masks uh, to mask uh, all these uh, different leaves because as you can notice these leaves those leaves are, are uh, placed on a different on a different plan mm -hmm. on a different plan in comparison with all the, these other leaves and there are the the branches then there are other branches here then there there is another this other branch that is only on the other part and uh, <laughs> this is quite tricky so uh here i needed to take a picture for the background and the sky the double exposure was also quite difficult to merge uh, the the lower the um, the darker exposure together with this uh, with this part which was quite brighter of course mm -hmm. so i needed to find uh, a compromise and um, and also i used here i used the color masks from the tk8 to um, to um, to um, to make to find the trick to um, uh, to be able to make the masks a little bit more easier for to focus take the single leaves but for for example for the branches i had to do it manually because mm -hmm. here you can select the yellow parts uh, with the color masks uh, of the tk8 and uh, um, make a mask uh, to um, to hide for example the blurred parts but uh, for example, for regarding the branches, you can't do it. So we have <laughs> to make everything manual. And uh, yes, here we have uh, all the leaves uh, that are placed on uh, on a different, on a different, yes. And I use it F13, so. <laughs> F13, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So uh, several times people ask me which kind of, uh, which kind of aperture are you using because of course if i use a uh, uh, <laughs> of course the, the more you open the, the diaphragm the open the open the aperture the more the aperture is open and of course of course you need to make focus taking you know but mm -hmm. uh, i use a, a very not so much open aperture more than f16 i don't go because i don't want to have uh, the problem of diffraction and mm -hmm. they want to have uh, very sharp details everywhere so i use f13 f16 mm -hmm. so this these leaves are for example here i i made a shot for this leaf because it was 
a little bit more in front of than the others. Then I, I did another one for this one. Then uh, these leaves are on the same plan. Then don't miss that there is also the grass here behind. So I made another shot also for the grass. Then I made another shot for also these leaves in, is in the same plan than this one. Then I made another shot for these uh, leaves, for those leaves here behind. Then another shot for the grass that is on the same plan than this one. Then there is this plan, which is the same of this one on the, on the right. And then those leaves behind. And of course, I had to clone uh, the blurred leaves that were moving from uh, one shot to the other and also the branches and also this this plan <laughs> <laughs> and also and also also this uh, also this one that is all also behind a little bit more behind so on yeah. a different plan and then the lake then i had to find also compromise between the exposure of the sky and uh, also because uh, the sky has to be um, of this um, is good of this color and uh, this exposure for the sky is good but of course the mountain were a little bit darker when i made a, low, a lower exposure of the sky so you had to make a double exposure and pay attention especially to this part of the lake because of course the reflection can't be brighter than the sky mm -hmm. Isabella, when you talk about double exposures, you mean that you take two shots with different exposures or you use HDR or bracketing or? Uh, I make, I don't use an automatic bracketing because I want to be free to uh, on the different light conditions because, because sometimes the, the condition of the light can be, the light is much more stronger. And sometimes we have the light that is a little bit less stronger. So I want to be free. I don't want the, the automatic bracketing. Then, then I change it. No, I prefer to make manual exposure. So maybe um, make a, a lower exposure with the, um, adjusting the, um, the shutter speed. Most of the times adjusting the shutter speed. And uh, and then uh, and then make simply more exposures. Of mm -hmm. course, for the focus taking, uh, I, I I do uh, a single exposure. Uh, for example, if I have a, a situation like this one where we have a, a very um, strong light, not so much strong because uh, it was quite hidden by some clouds, but was coming out. So uh, it's not so strong, but yes, it's quite strong. <laughs> so of course, so of course, uh, I make uh, some uh, brighter shots for the mountains and uh, the fo for the focus taking. Then I make another darker exposure for the sky and the reflection. And then I, I merge everything. Okay. But of course, I, I don't do several exposures also for the focus taking because otherwise it would be too much messy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, this is uh, taken in Kamchatka. And uh, yeah, here I use focus taking because uh, the camera was a little bit more more down than uh, other situations and in fact but it was quite easy because uh, i just have uh, i just had to take uh, some uh, to take a shot for this part to have uh, all these details very sharp mm -hmm. very very sharp and then another shot for yes the medium part and especially one shot uh, Yes, for the part that is quite much more far away. Here I made also a double exposure and it was not easy because uh, there was a mist around the volcano here. So I needed to find also here a compromise. 
between mm, the sky here and the volcano. And so I needed to include the volcano on the exposure for the sky because it was quite misty. And then the, mm, the brighter exposure start from, uh, from this part here. Yes. So then I made the focus taking as always. Is it a tree or a rock in the foreground? This, uh, this yeah. is lava. It's this lava. Is... Wow. Yeah, this is petrified lava. Uh, nice. It was. It's the lava from the eruption of 2012-2013 uh, of uh, the Tolbuachic volcano. And I did it also with the pronounce uh, with the Russian <laughs> pronounce. <laughs> and um, yes, there was a very strong eruption uh, after the one from uh, the 1975, which was very strong. There was this one, and uh, and then the lava, the the lava got petrified, and uh, it, all the shapes of the lava that was flowing uh, from the volcano to the to the valley to the cinder valley uh, it was petrified like that in fact in iceland if you go in iceland uh, where there is the volcano that just erupted there mm -hmm. there are these textures nice also nice. beautiful yes i i love volcanoes <laughs> <laughs> yes then there is this okay this one is the one that I want to show you. And then is uh, here, there is this uh, this um, image, this last image taken in Switzerland in uh, Canton Vote. Mm. And here we have, uh, um, I, I did three shots. I did one shot for the background as always, one shot for the middle, the middle part, the part in the middle, and then one shot for the gentians. These are yellow gentians. Mm, these are very big flowers, and they are quite tall. Uh, here, uh, the problem, mm, I, I had a problem with another image because uh, uh, taken in this place, because uh, uh, the, the yellow gentians were on uh, different plants. For example, two gentians were more uh, closer in front of old, another gentian, so I needed to take uh, several shots. But for example, these gentians are four and uh, fortunately are on the same plan. So I could make a shot uh, just uh, for the gentians and then, uh, of course, there was a little bit of wind, so I needed to clone uh, as always, the, the blurred part, the blurred gentian that came out after I made the mask. Here, I used it f16 mm -hmm. as aperture. So these are the pictures, and uh, now, uh, yes, if there there are not questions, if there are questions, I can answer. Otherwise, I go straight with the, with this image, and uh, I will show you a little bit how to merge uh, a little bit mm -hmm. how to merge the, the focus taking <laughs> when uh, the foreground the, when is not aligned and when the foreground is a little bit moving. Because we can go and answer. We have a lot of questions, so maybe it's a good idea to answer a few of them now, and then we continue with the de demo demonstration, and mm -hmm. then at the, at the end we answer all of them. Uh, because I think we have more than 20 questions now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, let me start with uh, Tomek. All shots are made with the same settings regarding aperture and time. OK, let's check. OK, here, F16, uh, one on, uh, on 350. Here, uh, yes, here maybe I wanted to take it free end. That's why maybe. Mm, I didn't use mm, the the tripod here. I don't know why. Maybe uh, I I was airing up, taking many images, and uh, that's why uh, I made one on 350 f16, and the ISO 400 was daytime, so the light was quite uh, quite. Uh, but 
uh, I don't know what it means. It, it means that uh, I take, for the focus taking, I take all the, the exposure are all with the same settings uh, or mm, yeah. he... ah, okay, for, okay. For, for, for one image, for, for one image, if you take uh, with the same settings. Okay, okay. It depends. No, the the images, uh, the exposure of uh, for the focus taking, I I use the same settings. Mm -hmm. Just uh, the focus point changes, because mm -hmm. uh, as I told you before, for this image, um, of course, uh, here I needed to make a double exposure, but to make it easy. Mm, I, for, for to merge the focus taking, I want to have all the same exposure. If it happens that for some reasons I don't really have the same exposure mm, and the, an area that has to be focus taken with another one is a little bit darker or brighter, I mm, in camera row or uh, Lightroom, I make uh, uh, I try to I try to make them mm, I make the same exposure. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I fix uh, I fix it uh, somehow, even if it depends from the situation. But for the focus taking area, I take I take it with all the same settings because they have to. When you merge them, you don't have to recognize that uh, the, um, some areas are um, some blocks are darker or brighter. They have to be the same. Then at the end, you merge the double exposure. Mm -hmm. So I suggest I suggest to make before merge the focus taking, and then the double exposure when you have it oh. always. Okay, thank you. Then You're we right. have uh, uh, Lillian White. Uh, did you use a flash on the flowers or the photo of the flowers, or just just not natural light? And uh, the flowers, he means uh, here. Yeah. Or here, here oh. is the sunlight because mm -hmm. it was quite strong the sunlight, and also consider that uh, if if uh, some flowers are brighter, even if it, there is not so much light, if the color of the flower is bright, is a bright color, for example, white or yellow. Mm, it reflects the light, the few light that there is much better. Because have you ever noticed, for example, that in uh, when you go hiking uh, mm, in the evening, if there is if the landscape is snowy, everything is there is snow, it's much easier to see the snow than another kind of uh, of floor with just hers. So. Or just trees, because uh, the the bright color is reflecting much more the light, even if the light is few. So it's normal that in some mm -hmm. images, uh, for example, the um, some flowers are brighter. Here uh, there was uh, quite natural light, and uh, of course, uh, as the flowers and uh, the leaves are a little bit upper than this part uh, here down, which is on the shadow. Of course, uh, they are brighter. It's not mm -hmm. neither the flash. Of course, yeah. they are brighter because they are a little bit upper than this part. Hmm. And it's you like, work with them in post, right? Yeah, then I accentuate the light uh, a little mm -hmm. bit, but without alterating the image. Cool. As, as you, uh, for example, uh, you can take, uh, try with, for example, a cube. Or, or uh, in, not an object on uh, on your desk on your table. You put it uh, uh, here on the table, and uh, uh, the upper part is always a little bit brighter, even if the light is a little bit few, because uh, because of course uh, the upper part uh, is a little bit brighter <laughs> because it takes much more the light that is on the on the environment. So fantastic, fantastic. We have another question. Um, GH rate. How do you deal with focus breathing when the change in focus plane can result in the foreground object increasing or decreasing in size by a pixel or two? Uh, with the focus um, breathing. With focus breathing. When the change in focus plane 
can result mm -hmm. in the for, in the foreground object increasing mm -hmm. or decreasing in uh, okay. a size of a pixel or two. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, he means that when uh, when you take a, um, different exposures uh, with the different focal point focus point, uh, uh, it's like from um, from an exposure to the other. It's like that there is a kind of zooming effect, mm -hmm. and the pixel, of course, look uh, smaller or bigger. But uh, it's just an effect when you align the the frames, the images this effect disappears because mm -hmm. when you align it automatically in Photoshop, it, it disappears, this effect. And it's totally normal. It's just because it's the effect of uh, the when you when you focus. In fact, when you focus, when you change it, the focus point and you you press on the button to start to, to take the shot, of course, the camera does zzz, zzz, <laughs> to, and the, there is a kind of little zoom and this is, this is the reason, yes, but no worries, <laughs> totally normal. You can, uh, you can just uh, align the layers when you align them, when you stack them, it's okay. <laughs> Great, great. And then the last one before we continue, because it's uh, getting, you know, uh, almost one hour already. Kobe <laughs> walls. So no filters, uh, just exposure compensation for the sky versus mountain. So you, you, you don't use any, 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 any filter, lens filter. like. A... Okay, the filter, it depends. Okay, in this situation, I didn't use uh, any filter. Uh, yeah, so I didn't use any filters sometimes, uh, but sometimes I use the, um, the filters like um, ND filter or GND. Uh, and the problem with focus taking um, is that uh, when you, the, um, when there is a lot of wind and uh, not, yes, a lot of wind, quite, quite a bit, quite a bit. Uh, and uh, you are shooting, for example, you need to shoot with um, a big uh, uh, a big shutter speed and nice shutter speed because a quick shutter speed because because there is a quite a little bit a lot of wind of course uh, when uh, yes when you use uh, the nd filter you need uh, because you want the effect of the clouds uh, they are, there are that have a motion blur of course uh, you you need to take an exposure for the sky or uh, Yes, if you have a lake or if there is also a lake or a reflection, you need also to take an exposure for, uh, yes, for the sky, for the lake. And then you have to take, to remove the filter and take an exposure for the foreground because otherwise yeah. the foreground <laughs> you can't take it. And, uh, but here I didn't, I didn't use filter, but sometimes I use them. For example, in, uh, in an image from Azores, I posted, um, a little, some months, one month ago, which was uh, a waterfall in Azores with many waterfall, a place with many waterfall, very green, and there is a very big leaf, leaf on the on the foreground, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a, a little bit of wind, uh, so I needed to um, to use uh, a, a quicker shutter speed for the foreground to to merge uh, to make a focus taking with the huge leaf uh, and uh, uh, the background of the leaf uh, as always and the leaf uh, the leaf uh, as always and uh, and then an exposure mm -hmm. for the background and then an exposure of course uh, for the sky that was mm, the cloud were moving a lot uh, so i needed to take an exposure also for the sky with the andy filter mm -hmm. <laughs> so i I did several thank, you. thank you for the explanation. So you, you're ready? We can go to the demonstration on how you focus type. Of course, of yeah, course, yes. perfect. Okay, so I want to make a demonstration with this image, and uh, and let's uh, let's make this. Uh, here I I have uh, two exposures, one for uh, the foreground. Okay, this is for the background. In fact, uh, here I have, uh, in fact, here I have a darker exposure. Sorry for the, um, <laughs> for the dust spots, but when I change my, 
my lens as the the lens the sensor is uh, parallel to the <laughs> to the aperture of the of the lens of course something always comes in and uh, and then uh, if uh, if for example I am a young up a, a lot and I don't have I don't want to use the um, uh, the yes the 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 brush for uh, for the yes for the sensor uh, I need absolutely uh, of course to take the shot and uh, and then uh, to fix it later anyway this uh, this is an uh, an exposure for the background here we have two plans this plan with the four with the um, the background the um, and also the middle part are together because uh, here I used an f16 aperture and uh, um, I was quite quite high with the tripod quite tall with the tripod and uh, that's why um, the camera recognized that this middle part and the background on the same plan mm -hmm. and well, uh, where, where did you focus in the background uh... At the rough I horizon or in the middle, in the middle of the in the middle, in, in the middle, middle of the scene. Okay. So uh, I am sure to take everything uh, quite uh, that, mm -hmm. that the focus is distributed everywhere, and mm -hmm. uh, on the middle. So here, because here is quite difficult. Uh, it's better to focus some somewhere here on the island, which is in the middle, and uh, you have uh, some precise uh, subjects. Uh, that are that is possible mm -hmm. to focus better. The lake uh, um, sometimes it recognizes this it the, the camera sometimes not. Uh, when mm -hmm. there are some details in the lake, uh, you can recognize it uh, the focus point the the focus um, system recognizes it, but uh, it's better to focus here on the on the land because there are more details mm -hmm. and it's easier to focus and. Um, Yes, and then we have these flowers. These flowers are on a different plan. Let's see <laughs> the magic. Okay, <laughs> here we have everything sharp. So we have to merge the foreground with the background. As you can see, the foreground is in front of the background. That's why uh, he wanted the, the camera didn't recognize the the yes the the focus here on this part. If I focus here, so we needed to open them. I use camera raw, but you can use also Lightroom. Okay, so. So here, I suggest immediately to check here this part to delete these things. I just delete them on this frame because we won't use the sky in this image, in the other image. We don't use this because we will use just the plants. Okay, now it's better. Okay, now let's uh, let's see a little bit the exposure for. Let's fix a little bit. Let's make some basic adjustments because uh, uh, yes, we have to improve a little bit the sky and uh, also the um, this part because it's a little bit dark. So let's. Um, here is in Italian, but uh, I will translate for you. This, uh, these are the shadows, so let's make the shadow a little bit upper. So let's recover a little bit the color also on this part. And then to recover a little bit the colors in the sky, let's make the lights, the highlights, a little bit more down to recover a little bit the details in the sky. Okay. The whites, I don't, I don't make the whites uh, brighter because uh, it's okay. We have enough brights, and uh, 
here there is uh, yes here we have already a bright part we have to fix again a little bit this part like this just one and sorry again but uh, okay okay perfect okay good and now uh, yes this part is okay maybe we can change the temperature if uh, we want the sky a little bit warmer and the tint a little bit more on the pink not too much but a little bit because sometimes the sensor is a little bit more on the green color but it's just a little bit eh? just to be more uh, precise and and then uh, and then it's okay i think uh, maybe the blacks uh, yes the blacks a little bit more open okay and then uh, i think it's okay i don't um, I, I make the 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 saturation vibrance uh, adjustments uh, on photoshop with the luminosity masks because uh, i want more uh, a little bit more precise adjustments so we don't make them in camera roll. and also because uh, with the brightness adjustments we make always the vibrant saturation a little bit more or less so i prefer to make this adjustment later and the details let's go on details because i want to get a little bit more details for for this area okay here and the details to we make the details to 100 usually i always make this and uh, it's okay just need to fix uh, two things here okay perfect then we can uh, yes uh, we fix uh, the this image also on optics uh, let's remove just the chromatic aberration and uh, I don't use correction, profile corrections, because uh, um, if uh, if the lens is not vignetting so much, uh, I think uh, it's, it's not useful. Okay, let's just that one. Okay, perfect. And then, okay, and then we can uh, we can uh, we can go on the other exposure. On the other exposure, as we will use just this part of the exposure, we have just to focus on this part for these adjustments. So we go on basic, then whites a little bit to accentuate the color of, uh, of the plants. Not too much, but a little bit to accentuate the yellow. And uh, also a little bit, let's open the shadows to have more details. And I think it's okay because um, I like also mm, the color of the flowers. I like the green color here. So I want to keep it like that. Uh, we have always to check uh, that um, it's quite similar the exposure to this image to this part of the image but it's quite normal that uh, this part is a little bit brighter because you see that the color is brighter and uh, the three-dimensionality is bigger because these parts are closer and uh, it's, it's easier that are that the three-dimensionality is bigger and then we we also go in details and uh, sharpness here sharpness uh, details 100 always sometimes i accentuate also the radius and uh, the amount of the sharpness but here i don't uh, we don't need it because it's really really very sharp okay then uh, optics uh, remove chromatic aberration if even if uh, 
the remove, removing chromatic aberration makes sense, uh, especially for the edges of the image, but we remove it also in these exposures, we never know. And then we can uh, push control or command for Mac and uh, click on the other image. Then we can open the objects in Photoshop. And then let's, let's start the focus taking. Okay, now Photoshop will open the two exposures or uh, if there are more exposure, more exposure, it will uh, open them in, uh, in more documents, not in the same document. So we need... A bit more time. <laughs> yes, a bit more time, of course. This is not um, this is not the um, the quick computer, a little bit um, slower, but yes. Now Photoshop op opened them in different documents, so we need to get them on the same document. To do this, uh, there are two methods. Uh, if you use the TK8, you just uh, need to go in in uh, in the actions TK and uh, just. Uh, push on stack if you don't have it it's very simple you need to go on layers on the layers panel layers on this button on this menu click on here and then duplicate layers then you have to go on destination this is the source document this is the destination document and the click on here and then place this image this layer on this document on the document this the other document which is uh, uh, which finishes for 8a2 so click on this as a destination document so place push ok and then if you go on the other document you will have uh, the the image the layer the other exposure on the same on the same uh, document so we can close this one and then uh, i usually um, put the option that i will uh, mm, that i uh, i i use usually smart objects but um, fortunately to align the layer because we need to align the layer first because uh, we have to merge them as focus taking uh, we need to to blend uh, to to align the layer because the layers are not aligned because of several reasons not only mm, is not just for free and is also for uh, if there is little bit of uh, if the tripod is there is a a, a micro movement between uh, one shot uh, and the other so you need of always almost always to align the layers and uh, so to align the layers of course we have to press control or command for mac and uh, go on edit and uh, and auto align layer the problem is that auto align layer doesn't work because we have smart objects so we need to click with the right button of the mouse on uh, one layer and then go in rasterize layer because we need to, to um, convert the smart objects into normal layers. And then we go in edit and auto line layers. Projection, automatic, and I never use the lens correction like uh, vignetting removal or distortion, nothing, <laughs> nothing, and always just projection automatic. And then let's push OK. This kind of the, the alignment of the layer is solves also solves also the problem of uh, the little zoom that uh, um, that the person asked the question, uh, mentioned mm -hmm. it, the zooming, the yes, the briefing, the briefing exactly. Okay, now the yes, now it's aligned. The only problem, of course, uh, 
is the fog that here is different. The lake, this detail here, which is not, uh, which there is not in uh, this exposure. And of course, uh, later when uh, we merge, uh, when we finish the, the merging, the focus taking, uh, we will have uh, to cut uh, the picture and remove uh, this edge because this is the edge uh, after the alignment because of course uh, the um, Photoshop um, aligns uh, the layers so it moves them, it makes them a little bit little so that's why uh, quite often, almost always, there is this edge here. Okay, so now the technique is this one. As the flowers, of course, are moving to a position, from a position to the other, as you can see, we will have a little problem <laughs> because this is not a still element. And uh, this technique, I call it hard focus taking because, of course, you have to manage this problem. And uh, what do I mean? OK, let's start to make the mask. In fact, we have to mask essentially all this from uh, this edge of uh, the leaves to all the part up. So we need to, to mask everything uh, is outside of uh, this uh, area. So we need to make a mask with this symbol on uh, this layer. And essentially, with the black brush, we have to hide. We have to hide the blurred part, which is on this layer. On this layer, because this layer, this layer, because this layer eight a two, as we have here, the sharp leaves and behind the background is blurred. So we need to hide the blurred part, essentially, mm -hmm. on the mask to get everything sharp, because we needed to hide the blurred part of the layer 8A2, because we have to show the sharpened part of the layer 8A9, which has the sharp part for this area. OK, so we just need to have the black brush always opacity and flow 100 because we need to have a very precise uh, very precise uh, adjustment with the brush they need to be very sharp so we don't uh, we don't need to admit uh, we don't have we don't have to admit uh, for example um, some uh, areas with have different uh, opacity because they be they are uh, not <laughs> the effect would be not so nice. And then uh, the thing that I suggest, uh, of course, uh, is to draw essentially the edge before, not to don't, uh, yes, to make the things uh, in, a, in a technical way. <laughs> uh, we have to draw the edge outside of the leaves and then uh, we can paint uh, all the other part after, for example. Mm -hmm. So first, uh, mm, let's continue. First, let's continue on uh, this edge, and then uh, we will uh, mask the the, mm, the part that is missing. As you can see, here is the problem. Look uh, what I'm. I'm getting with this mask. This is nothing else uh, that the blurred leaf that is coming outside because uh, the leaves um, the leaf uh, moved from one shot to the other. So mm -hmm. um, before uh, in this shot in the eight eight nine, the leaf uh, what the leaf was <laughs> on this position <laughs> and uh, on this layer was uh, in this shot was here the leaves so this is the problem this is why we need uh, later to clone 
this part to clone just uh, the part that is blurred. We have to remove it. In fact, um, of course, I will uh, I will show you a part of uh, of course of this editing uh, because otherwise, sometimes uh, that's why I I tell people uh, also in social media that that ask me about this technique. Uh, about also why I take so much time to edit my images. Most of the time is because of this. Okay, yeah, because we have a, we have a question that uh, from Dean Dejan okay. Novik. Uh, why why Isabella is not using luminosity masks and doing the masking manually with the brush by hand? Because uh, because this uh, fo the focus does, has nothing to do with luminosity, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly is it, another thing. Sometimes uh, to do a clever thing, I select uh, the color. In fact, in this in this uh, situation, for example, I can select uh, the the color of uh, of uh, this uh, flower. Let's go, for example, in Multimask, press on this. I, yes, here people should know also Luminosity Mask, uh, how to use the TK8 panel, but I just do it quickly. And here, for example, I select this color. And then here I modify the mask because I want it very contrasted. make it so you see that i select it much better so i don't have problems okay then this is uh, maybe a little bit tricky for those who don't know luminosity mask but i do it very quickly this button inverts the mask because i have to paint outside to to define the edges mm -hmm to hide the blurred part, OK. And now I can select, for example, and when I have, for example, a flower like this that has a, a different color from the foreground, the background, and everything else, it's easier. But the problem is that here I have uh, the background and the leaves uh, that have more or less the same color, and it's not hmm. so easy. And. Uh, but for example, here I can make this trick. And you can see that I can paint it very easily. Of course, as you see, it will appear the flower that moved, moved the, blooded, the blooded flower that moved from one shot to the other. And of course, we have to be careful because, yeah, because here we have another color. And also yeah. the drops. Let's be careful about the drops. <laughs> <laughs> That's why sometimes I sometimes I take a long time to make this. Yeah, yeah. I realize that you you spend a lot of time uh, working on your images. Huh? Like, to exactly. Get it perfect. Exactly. So um, in fact, uh, this is just uh, a little bit for demonstrating you how it's working. Mm -hmm. But yes, for example, in this way, I saved the mask. I, I, I could paint quicker here because uh, I selected the yellow part. But for nice. example, be careful because uh, the greens have also some yellows inside. So when you select the greens, you have to be careful to exclude on uh, the interval here. You have, uh, for example, when you selected the greens, uh, you have to be careful because you have to exclude this kind of yellow by making the the range the interval a little bit more a little bit more uh, strict yes in this way then you make it brighter with the slider for example yeah so you have to be careful let's abort the mask okay uh, and uh, okay so uh, i spend all the time just to show you, I spent all that I spend all the time to make to paint the edge here on the behind the leaves to save 
of course, uh, the background uh, mm -hmm. to make the to show the sharpened background uh, that is on the mm -hmm. other layer. Uh, you can also leave a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, edge here without uh, painting uh, until uh, almost uh, until the leaf, the leaf, the, the, the leaf here, because, uh, because it's here you don't have on this little um, part here that I didn't paint it, you don't have some details. So it's easier um, than when you paint the mask is easier. And then uh, you just uh, need to clone this part, uh, this blurred part that is appearing. And uh, let's see how I clone, for example, this uh, blurred part that is appearing. Let's say that now we made all the, yes, we, we painted mm -hmm. all uh, along the edge of uh, the foreground and uh, everything is okay. Then I paint uh, all the rest of the image. But let's say that now the problem is that this sh this uh, blurred parts appeared behind <laughs> behind the, the foreground. This blurred part appeared behind the sharpened part. Let's see how to clone them. We just need to clone them, and we have to go not on the mask, of course, but on the layer. And uh, of course, you have to, uh, you, you need to have the idea of which layer he is, because uh, of course you have to know that uh, this is. Uh, this is not uh, the right layer. You have to clone it uh, on the on the other layer, because this blurred part belong on this layer. Mm -hmm. Because of course, uh, in uh, in the second layer, we had the, the sharpened foreground with the blurred black background. So that's why we need to clone this part, this blurred part on the other the first layer because the first layer is the one with the blurred foreground mm -hmm. and uh, here we we need to clone it and we can use for example the clone stem tool and here is the tricky especially the tricky the tricky thing because we need especially to take some parts from other areas which are quite far away and quite similar because we don't we don't have to uh, to make uh, to make repetitions <laughs> of course yeah and and then so we have to to pick some other areas that are similar for example, this area, we can find it very similar, for example, here. Here I didn't paint it, but when you clone on this layer, you got you get the, the sharpened one because it, I didn't paint it here, but it's, here is quite similar, but you can also take it from other parts. Of course, opacity 100. Hmm. Of course, when you paint it a little bit to avoid the repetition, you need it to take another part. For example, for example, this one. So people want to realize that you that you took another area. Now okay. another one. Here. Okay. And now we cloned it. And um, mm, for example, this part we can take it from uh, let's see here. This is quite similar because it's the same plant where is ah, here and 
then then another here so if you take several pieces then you avoid to show that you created some repetition on your image this from here so you create some mixes to avoid the people realize that you Mm -hmm. create repetitions because of the cloning this is a trick that you to avoid this <laughs> this kind of inconvenient and this quite is quite long of course but yes this is the way for example how i create you can see now this part of the of the flower is okay because the background is sharp the part of the flower is sharp you have also all the drops and um, and you don't have to worry um, that that you that you clone also a part of the flower because um, when you make the mask in a good way so you you make you um, you paint along the edge of the of the foreground of the element of course, you don't have to worry because uh, when you use uh, uh, the clone stem tool uh, in uh, this layer, then uh, if uh, here is already masked, the background is already masked. You don't have to worry that uh, you you also um, you also clone a part of the flower. It's not a problem. So this is a trick that I use uh, to make this kind of focus taking. And then I continue, for example, for all the image, for all the image, mm -hmm. I continue for this yeah. part, for this part, for the leaves uh, here. Of course, it's a work of several hours. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there is no software that that can uh, solve this thing uh, because mm, when the subject, when the foreground moves from one shot to the other, unfortunately, I, I also I also tried with many other so uh, softwares, but uh, unfortunately, it can recognize the the yeah. movement. It can clone it properly, and uh, let's let's wait that uh, artificial intelligence can solve the, this, <laughs> this thing but of course uh, i would take much less time but uh, yes the result is i like it always so yeah <laughs> and then uh, yes yes exactly exactly and then of course you have to merge the layer you have to merge the layer by pressing command option mayusk or shift e Otherwise, uh, in Windows, uh, Control, Alt, Majusk, E. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then uh, you have the focus static image, and then you continue, continue to make your adjustment and everything. Uh, of course, uh, here I would also paint uh, the sky, for example. I, of course, uh, here I would also hide the sky because the sky this is the part that, uh, of course, uh, we need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's important, yes. And this Fantastico. Be... <laughs> it's difficult, it's tricky, but the result uh, is always satisfying, especially with very tricky situations. In these days, I'm, uh, I'm merging a very tricky image from Lofoten, and because there are all the plants that are on a different plan, on yeah. all the leaves uh, that are on all the leaves uh, that are on a different plan and uh, it's so tricky but i will do it i like difficult situations <laughs> more satisfying if you like photographing plants and flowers uh, when it's windy it's uh you'll have uh, another another option until until ai comes and saves us time right exactly that's the problem and uh, in fact, it was quite windy in that situation. And uh, uh, I think it will be ready in some days, in one week, maybe. I'll see. Because I don't have so much time in these days. But uh, when I, when it will be ready, <laughs> of course, you will see it on social media, on Instagram. Isabella, we have a few uh, questions, if you don't mind. Do you have time to answer them? Yeah. 
Okay, we have uh, Petr H. Uh, how do you calculate where to focus? The fundamental question. Yes, like... exactly. Uh, it's not easy because, uh, for example, um, when you have so many focus points, so many plans uh, in the image, uh, you need uh, to see absolutely to check always that uh, in one exposure everything is um, when where um, you have to see where the unsharpened um, their sharper are sharp unsharpened areas are uh, because it's very important to check them because other you you miss and then you miss uh, even then you miss uh, the an area it's not good because you, then you have an unfocused area so when you take an exposure it's very important when you take an exposure you have to check with the live view that everything that everything is uh, sharpened or mm, that mm, that are some parts which are the parts that are not sharpened for example uh, i take an image of uh, for example this image for example i take uh, the image of uh, of this view and then i check which areas are not sharpened and uh, how much of focus the certain aperture that i'm using can cover for example in fact it's very this is very important and i have you have to check and zoom a lot with the live view because it's not mm. easy with the live view to see um with just um a small screen if you if you focus at everything in a proper way so you have to check it by zooming in the live view and uh, and then check uh, all the areas and um, all the areas and check that how much are unfocused and mm -hmm. where uh, until when the focus point uh, covers the focus the, fo the focused area so uh, for example for this image uh, i saw that uh, the focus area was arriving until a certain area so i said okay so i now i make another shot of uh, with a different focus point on the, always on the center of the frame of the of the center of uh, that area that was unsharpened in the other shot and and then I check again with the live view if uh, if it's if uh, everything is sharpened there or there is another area that mm -hmm. is in, more in front of me in front of the in front of the background that is not sharpened. Usually, mm, I mm -hmm. uh, after a lot of experience, a lot of years, I I trained my eyes to recognize mm -hmm. usually. The different plans and usually i can uh, i can easily manage and uh, i can easily guess guess how how it will uh, how it will become uh, later but of course i always check but this is uh, for example the i think the better way okay thank you then we have ramon fritz how long do you spend on an image on average in post-production? <laughs> you already answered that. It's several hours, uh, yes. right? It depends uh, on, uh, on the situation. Five, ten hours? It depends. It depends. So it depends on the situation. Sometimes when the image is easy, one hour. Sometimes when the image is more yeah. difficult, it has a lot of di different plans. I take also several uh, days because uh, wow. i make some breaks uh, and then yeah. uh, i because otherwise I, I can't do anything else so i plan to have some days and i dedicate them i dedicate myself to this image awesome thank you then we have a stefano jelly uh, do you use only the hasselblad system or also another camera uh, no, uh, now I don't have other cameras before. I had the Nikon D810, mm -hmm. and, uh, but then I sold it last year because um, I just, uh, I was okay with Hasselblad, just use it Hasselblad and, uh, and I sold it. Uh, nice. It was my camera before Hasselblad, um, but I, I still have some uh, raw files that sometimes uh, of the previous years that I some, sometimes I like to use uh, to, to edit 
So, mm -hmm. because it was a nice camera. Nice, nice, thank you. We have John uh, Hannessy. Do you ever use a uh, tilting lens? What? Til til tilting lens? Mm. Mm, no, no, I no? Uh, no, I don't have it. I don't have it. Okay, okay, more questions. Mike Bill, uh, when you are composing the image, do you focus from front to back or back to front? Um, it depends also. Also, it depends how, how much is he... From, for example, in this situation, I focused, um, I focused on the foreground and then uh, I, I was hiding uh, the background with the mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, but depends depends mm, depends on uh, mm, for example if if there is a beautiful sky and I want uh, during the shot if there is a beautiful sky and I want to capture it uh, I focus on the sky before absolutely and then uh, when I took the sky I go until the foreground so I don't okay. miss uh, the beautiful situation the beautiful uh, light. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Then we have well, Mike uh, Wagon. Would it be best to take the first shot at the lens hyperfocal length uh, since everything behind that will be in focus and then work inward, taking as many as, uh, as, many, as many photos as needed to, to get the rest in focus? Uh, as, as you explained, it seems that you don't, you don't use hyperfocal distance, you just focus at the background and then you, you move uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. Towards the camera. Exactly. Because hyperfocal gives you not that that a sharp background, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, yes, but uh, yes, I usually yes make the things on the situation. I don't use fixed rules. Usually, for mm -hmm. example, in a situation, I like to use F16 in order F13, but depends also uh, on the situation, on the light condition. So it depends on really on the light, on the wind moving the subject. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Erms Cabas, you are showing us for uh, many vertical panoramas, uh, many vertical images. Is it your taste? Like your, mm. is it your style? <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, I, I like more the vertical format because I can uh, catch more of the foreground and have a better visual on the foreground. But depends, depends also. In, I use very much the vertical format, but I also use the, the landscape format. Especially in the last years, I I don't know why I like to use vertical format because I, I like to to capture more, much more of, uh, of the foreground. So I can mm. capture more details, leading lines, things like this. Nice, nice, thank you. Uh, Mario Vigo, how can you do focus stacking in knife photos where you need to use large apertures like 2.8 uh, for low light? Yes, <laughs> in this situation, of course, uh, of course, I have to make a lot of uh, pictures. Uh, not always I use it in uh, night photography because usually in night photography I, I use less difficult situations or when I don't have so much time, but when I have time, of course, uh, I use uh, f2.8 or um, in the case of uh, the f6, uh, six, uh, the XCD21, uh, I have f4 that is more or less like uh, f2.8 in uh, full frame. And, uh, and yes, of course, I need to take a lot of pictures, a lot of pictures for um, <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, yes, when uh, the foreground is very windy, it's very difficult to take, to take pictures in the night and uh, it's, very, it's very difficult, it's very complicated, it's not possible because always you have to use a longer exposure 
especially for the foreground, I need to make a very long exposure because I have to capture all uh, the, the details in the foreground. That's why uh, sometimes in this situation, when there is a lot of wind, I take the image in the blue hour, the mm -hmm. foreground in the blue hour, and then I make a time blending for, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Interesting. And um, thank you. I have Chris Mastriano. What what was the most photos you had stacked? Uh, many the photos. Most... Uh, oh, I think like uh, one thousand photos stacked. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I think uh, ten, eleven, mm. also fifteen. Okay, then uh, the last question before we say goodbye, because it is almost one hour and 40 minutes, actually over <laughs> one hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> Thank you for the class, Isabella. But no uh, Marek, Ma Marek is uh, asking you if, uh, do you plan your photos in advance? Do you have your favorite places where you go or where you want to go? Or are you taking advantage of the moment while, while, while walking? Okay, uh, there is a part that I plan because, um, for example, if I want to, to visit a location or I, I don't know an area and they want, for example, to check some beautiful place, I check them on Google Earth and, uh, and then uh, I plan with photo peels uh, the, <laughs> the direction of the light, the Milky Way position, all the the time uh, the, the time of uh, the sunrise sunset and this mm -hmm. stuff but there, of course there is a part that i don't plan for example uh, yes some weather conditions that maybe are very variable otherwise also yes the foreground because the foreground uh, for example in a place that i don't know i can maybe guess what kind of foreground can be there for example in a certain season there are some certain flowers at a certain altitude so more or less i can have an idea but of course not always and uh, sometimes uh, i find uh, some textures some uh, different foregrounds that create some uh, um, some leading lines some geometries in the foreground and in this situation maybe i just go around i go maybe some hours before uh, the sunset or the sunrise and then i go around uh, and uh, check uh, the different composition and my favorite i use it for the best light even if this depends on uh, on the weather, if, the, if, if it's more variable, I do immediately every shot and then I I return on on a foreground and yes. Yeah, I suppose that when you discover a nice foreground, is uh, then is when you can plan maybe to have different conditions or the different position of the sun or different uh, sun direction, yeah, or Milky Way. But yeah, exactly. scouting is, is key, scouting. Yeah. Yes, there is the augmented reality function for a photo peels uh, yeah. that you can mm -hmm. you can see uh, the, um, if the sun is setting or uh, mm -hmm. coming uh, um, or rising on a, on a, on a view, you can see it. It's very, it's very useful. Yeah, yeah. Basically, you want to learn how to plan your photos. You, you have a lot of videos in, in this uh, in our YouTube channel, Lopez channel. Oh, Isabella, uh, you made it. Thanks so much. You're welcome. It was really <laughs> fantastic, and uh, hope that you found found it uh, very useful. And yeah. um, yes, if you have other uh, questions, I'm available by email and. Uh, uh, where people can connect with you? Uh, what's your website, uh, social networks? Yes, on my website. Yes, uh, I see many people uh, write me on uh, on Instagram on the mm -hmm. um, on the DMs. But uh, yes, it's better email because I never see to uh, all the DMs, uh, so it's a little <laughs> yeah. bit difficult. <laughs> Sorry, and uh, but by email you can uh, ask me. So isabellatabaki.com, right? Yes, isabellatabaki.com. Awesome. Yes. And then they, they, they'll find, find your, uh, your workshops, your blog. Uh, you, you're telling me that you're going to start writing 
nice contents and if people want to keep learning from you you have also tutorials right online for sale exactly exactly so. uh, then on the blog i will uh, uh, i will uh, also make a post about uh, this uh, this talk so mm -hmm. i can nice. put for yes i can put the things uh, written so they can mm -hmm. check they can check it and Perfecto. maybe if they didn't understand some things, they can see also the things written on my blog post. So <laughs> it's gonna be great. Let me see if I can if I can share uh, oh, oh, oh. share screen. Now it's me who is sharing. So this is your website. Yes. Uh, yeah, guys. You want to connect with Isabella? You have the website, the workshops, editing, everything uh, you need. You can even oh, you 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 can even get a consultancy with you, right? <laughs> exactly, cool. exactly. You can uh, you can ask me yes, uh, what what to do, what I think about your pictures or uh, about uh, maybe if you want to get full times and you want some suggestions um, and uh, yes, workshops. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Everything, everything. Well, Isabella, I think it's time to say goodbye. Any yes. last word we say before we go back to have dinner? <laughs> so this time, yes, this was great. And um, if uh, if you have other questions, yes, you can reach reach me on my website, on my on my email, and. Uh, Yes. Anyway, it was a very nice session. I am happy. <laughs> you you <laughs> happy made it work. all. You made it all. All the work, hard work. Thanks so much for being us live today, and thanks so much everyone for watching. Uh, we are still oh, for 2,000, 200 people uh, watching live this class, so it's amazing. Fantastic. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks so much, Isabella. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thanks for being part of this community. And well, guys, it's time to say goodbye. If you like this video, as always, give us a like, subscribe. And I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot. Legendary photos. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> bye bye, everyone. Stay safe.